is a grant? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, 272, 272 is um, the, the YMCA for senior swimming. This program has been going on for numerous years, and this is the same contract with no price increase from last year. Uh, 273 is compensated of absences for Anna Walker. 274, 275, 276, and 277 are all RCA awards. Um, and 286 is special events applications. 278 is authorizing payments of bills, um, and I'm requesting that one of the purchase orders be uh, tabled at this time or pulled from it because we're having some discrepancies with it. 279 is authorizing purchase of three license plate readers. Um, these are off the LSAG contract. These are for the police department to install three mobile plate readers in their vehicles. We currently have none. These, um, we had one years ago, I mean, a couple of years ago, they weren't compatible with the software or the county. Um, these, uh, these are. Um, 281 is change order number two for the City Hall Generator Project. Um, this is to allow the turnover from JCPNL and their staff to come um, basically fire up wiring and turn it on. Um, we'd ask, there will be disruption in the fall this day. Um, power will be out more or less. Um, it will be on a generator for um, isolated, such as phones and, and some basic internet service. But once we get a closer date, um, we'll be sending out releases so the public knows that we will be operating very, very limited. Um, we'd ask JCPNL to provide a price quote to do this off hours overnight or Saturday, and it was eighteen to twenty one thousand dollars. It used to be a pay basically in a rate of time and a half. It's not worth it for supporting the paying out. So when's the completion date? We're looking I'm I have a call with them later this week. We're looking hopefully the last Friday in September. Um, and staff has already been briefed on this. What we're gonna do is make it a cleanup day. Um, we're gonna use hotspots, laptops, do records retention, get a surplus of items for auction for October and do a massive, massive cleaning of everything that we can get rid of here, legally get rid of here. Uh, 282 is change order number one for the emergency services radio test, radio test coverage. Um, as you know, a few months ago, this contract was authorized for um, the company to drive around the city to test the radio system for the upgrading of the digital banding with the fire and police department. We were hopeful that we wouldn't need to do it um, do an addition to the contract, but when they were getting to the uh, to the high rises, the senior towers, they weren't able to get accurate readings, so they weren't comfortable making recommendations. We're obviously not comfortable receiving something that isn't done correctly. So for the additional money, they're going to be going up and down the uh, all the high rises to ensure proper radio coverage from the police department. They told me they should have this done report back by the end of October, in which at that point in time there will be some sort of resolution recommended, either purchase of radios or purchase of a repeater system, which we'll, we're probably going to need for the, some of the high prices. Um, for those of you who don't remember, currently the police department has a 30-year-old system that we want to get rid of because it's going to cost us a quarter million dollars to replace, and we are looking at either the county or state police system, so we don't have to buy our own hardware. Or a small tower somewhere, and we will have no other expenses later on. Um, resolution 283 is for the Mayor and Council acting as a redevelopment entity for Madison Asbury for conceptual review of the Fourth Avenue Pavilion on Block 4502, Lot 1.13. Uh, the city planner is here. If you have any <coughs> questions, she's off to the side. Uh, this is you guys acting as redevelopment entity saying that the plan that Madison plan conforms with the redevelopment plan. Um, is there any questions, Michelle? Well, I was just going to say, if you're only here for this, we did have a question, um, and I talked it over with Michael, but maybe you and Fred can give me your opinion about putting in, you know how we have the days that we get at discounted, we get the city days at Convention mm -hmm. Hall or, or uh, the Paramount, well, we wanted to do that with the third floor party room. Yeah. Right. And so I, maybe that's something that goes in the redeveloper's agreement. But why not put it in here also? So when it goes to planning board, they're aware of it because when they were here, 
I know Amy brought it up to them, to them being Mass and Marquette. So it was discussed in the past. So, um, but one of the things that they specified, that deck area was not public. It was only for the office PCs. And I believe they had said they would look into it. So saying that, um, if this is something that we still want to discuss, we should also include in the resolution, or I could, would defer to Fred, that we're going to do a subsequent redevelopers agreement with this because sometimes we do with the pavilion project, sometimes we don't. That's fine. I would agree with that suggestion and that would be the proper way to handle a request like that. And when does that happen? Before the planning board can take action, they would have to enter into this agreement. No, not necessarily before the planning board takes action, but that would be one of the conditions of their getting the approval that they enter into a subsequent developer's agreement with the city. Um, that would be a condition of their approval. Okay. Yeah, I think we're both saying the same thing, but this is My what this is what we're sending to the planning board all right. with all the recommendations, and that's not in this. So why not just add that in this? Well, because here's a, a, a question more about the use of that deck. I believe, and you, you know, you can see that the idea with this deck is not going to be a, a fully public use. In other words, we are not going to see there on a regular basis people, music, that this is really just a deck for tenants, tenants mm -hmm. to use, right. and that it would not be No, I think your recollection is right. No, you, it's 100% correct, yeah. but that doesn't mean that they're going to abide by that. Well, that can, of course, go, well, go into a subsequent re redevelopment agreement if that, and they would have to abide by it. That there would be after the fact. No, it's not after the fact, because the use of the deck itself is not really a purview at the planning board. I agree. And maybe that's why there needs it to be a cap for interpretation. But, it, but their plans show a third floor deck with restrooms. So, I mean, right. if they have the restrooms for the second floor and the third floor, they're using the third floor. Right. Uh, and that was something that I had, I believe, flagged. Right. About, the, about that. I don't know. I did. Uh, I'll defer to everybody, but I just feel safe, but like, it doesn't hurt to put things in writing twice. Well, as long as we're going to, unless that's going to, if it's going to take it off tonight. So if, as long as you're going to put in there, there's going to be a redeveloper's agreement and we can slide that in there, Okay. that would be the way to catch it, right? Yes. I mean, there's a, there's a provision in this resolution already that says the mayor and council's approval are subject to the following conditions which shall be incorporated into planning board approvals. Um, one of those is what Michelle was referring to, the fact that the use of the third floor roof deck shall be limited to use by the office tenants only and not used for any restaurant or related use. Mm -hmm. um, one of the additional conditions is that as a condition of the city's approval, uh, MA Retail shall, schedule a ske shall submit a schedule for construction and we can include an additional condition that um, MA Retail must enter into a subsequent developer's agreement with the city. Fine. And we can address these issues in the subsequent developers. Fine. Thank you. Otherwise, we're running low on 
project look like? It's the standard repaving and sewer infrastructure if needed. No streetscapes. No streetscapes. And what's the estimated cost? We don't know yet until the application is part of the application process. Memorial Drive isn't that bad compared to the many streets in this town. And I hear what you're saying as far as like, and some of the worst ones aren't dead ends. And I know we've talked about bridge. I mean, I don't even know how bad, like, and plus, what time frame would this be? Is this going to be the same time they're doing Main Street? Now we're going to have the two major arteries going north and south? North and south being shut down at the same time? If we wouldn't shut this down, we would do alternate side. Alternate street, alternate side of the streets are due at a different time than what Main Street is going to be. We don't have Main Street plans. We don't know what they're going to do. They told us months ago they'd be ready. They haven't provided us with anything, and there's no time frame. They haven't gone out to bid yet, right? They haven't given us the design plans to review yet. Okay. We don't have a clue there. Realistically, you're probably looking at now fall of next year for Main Street because it's a 60-day bid process or 90-day review process. There's no way they're getting anything done. If they're not at design yet and it's October, they give us 30 days to review. So I don't see them going out to bid until November, December, awarding in the spring, and then they know they can't do this construction. Utilities still haven't mobilized. I just know we have worse streets in the city, and as far as, like, I don't have the list of how they were graded last year, but how about Ridge from Bangs to Asbury? That's horrible, and that's a through street. We didn't think it was going to grade as high. This is more of a thoroughfare than Ridge is, and I know Ridge is a thoroughfare, but this connects the county road. It's parallel to the state highway. If you want to apply for Ridge, we can change this. Can you apply for more than one? You won't get it. They'll tell you which is your priority. The questionnaire is what is your priority. So if you want to try for two, but quite honestly, it's a waste of money. I would only apply for one because we still have to pay for some of the portion of it anyway. But we're going to pay for a majority of the portion. If it's a $500,000 grant, it's going to be a $3 million job, so we're going to buy this portion. If you want to hold off until the end of September and I'll try to get better costs, that's fine. But the application, I believe, is due in October. And can you get us a list of how the streets were graded last year and give us all the other streets? They're all residential streets like Bridge, quite honestly. We're Bridge next year. We're proposing. Well, how about Asbury from Maine to Burke? I mean, that's a major thoroughfare, but that's in just as good a shape as Memorial. Memorial is in good shape compared to the rest of our streets. Just like, you know, I'm happy. If you told me they were going to pay everything in full, I'd say no problem. But if they're going to give us a half million dollars, it's going to be a $3 million job. We're going to be going out and bonding $2.5 million because, you know, down well, we're going to be replacing all the sewer lines. But that's a good thing. It's a good thing, but, again, I don't know. We have worse streets. Worse streets that we're not going to get, in our opinion, funded for. Okay, then if you see no problem holding off on this in two weeks. Now, do you see any problem? No, I don't believe the date was due. If you want to put a condition tonight, I believe you could. I'll double-check the date between meetings, and when you approve it, I can give an update saying that this is when it's due by. But I think I believe it's due in October. Yeah, I would just like to see a list of the other streets and how they're rated because I know Ridge, which is a through street. I know we did the southern end, but we never did the northern end. I mean, it's going to be the same cost. It's about the same length. Ridge might have to be a little more because those sewers are in poor shape. But the street's in ten times worse shape. It's the distance. It's mill and pave is the same thing. It's going to be the cost to do sewers. If you're milling and paving six blocks, it's the same cost. No, I agree, but if you've got a street, say you rate a street from one to ten, and ten is it's good. So if a street's a five, that's so-so. But if a street's a one. It's Ridge. Ridge is a one. Okay, and maybe Ridge is worse. So, again, I would like to see the list of when they were rated. Because I doubt Memorial was on the top of the list. No, it's not in bad shape. But when you start getting into these grants where the city spent the 
last last year for a million dollar worth of repairs, and a lot of that is from the DOT grants. What happens is you become almost a normal municipality, and a normal municipality, you're redoing these things so you don't have to do them later. Instead of having them done every ten years, you're doing them every seven. And you're getting ahead of the game. That's where some of these streets are. But we'll look at Ridge. We'll look at at Memorial again. And if we wait two weeks, and it's okay, we'll still be here. If you can wait two weeks, I appreciate it. Uh, you can find out in between meetings and I would like to get a list of how the streets were rated please Michael would they put storm scepters in on these streets as well are there storm scepters in on uh, memorial in that I don't well? believe so so would they There's install like two that might they're on the corners they're like more on the through streets yeah would they would that be part of this project would if they install storm scepters we can the engineer to do it. it would make sense if we're on the project. Bike and lanes? Would they do bike lanes? If it's, if it's, it's either bike lanes or showers. If they fit. Okay. All right. And Michael, you'll, can you just send the street rating thing to all of us? Yes, of course. Uh, resolution 285 and entering into a right-of-way agreement. This is with Verizon. Um, this was, they came back, if you remember, a couple, weeks, a couple meetings ago, the city authorized Verizon to install free Wi-Fi in the Central Business District of Springwood Avenue. They actually came back to us saying they wanted to expand the project. Um, they found that due to the sheer volume of people that have been coming to the city, their wireless signals have become degraded. Um, so they wanted to install still Wi-Fi, but they want to change out some of the receptors and antennas to hybrids that handle both Wi-Fi and wireless so that we actually have better wireless service district and up to Springwood Avenue. Um, it, it's a council resolution. This is just changing what was approved before. There is, their investment increases to upwards of $5 million. Um, and everything has to go through SHPO regardless, which we made clear in the resolution. So we're recommending that we amend this contract for Verizon. Um, they're still find it, finalizing where the final goals need to be. Um, but this, this allows myself to, to do the agreement and everything gets approved by SHPO. This is a huge win for the city for this sort of investment because we keep growing and it could allow the network to expand. And then resolution 287 was added today um, and my request is a waiver from New Jersey Department of Transportation inspection fees for the Springwood Avenue sewer upgrades. Um, DOT wants us to give them $25,000 for their inspectors. I think that's preposterous. Um, they, they cited the regulations. In the regulations, there is a waiver. Um, the waiver has to be granted by the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Form MT-159. So Form MT-159 has been completed. Um, we want, we're, I'm recommending that we do be a resolution so we can send it to everyone, Senator Beck, two assembly members, um, the Commissioner, the Director of Local Government Services, so that it gives a little bit more gravitas should not be paying as a transitional aid municipality $25,000 for a DOT inspector. That to me is ludicrous. Good job. Thank you. Once the settled, and when they had such a big void, and that area has been sinking anyway, 
the curb and sidewalk in front of the high school. Um, I told the engineer this morning, um, I was speaking to Jason, that he asked if they should just replace, replace all of the uh, curbing, the sidewalk, because it was looking horrible. So they're actually going to replace all the, the curbing. The contract actually, um, since it came in under our price, we can afford that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, the curbing or the sidewalk? sidewalk. It's like a 30 foot wide sidewalk. It, there's parts of it that are failing as they've looked at it, and it just was looking horrible as we had to do it. And since the contract's under price, um, and we're looking, to, we're probably going to have some quantity decreases. That it, it hopefully is a net zero, but it's not going to cost us that much money. It's looking at ten thousand to fifteen thousand dollars to get this in front of the school brand new sidewalk. Okay. Uh, the traffic signal at Sunset and Comstock. The foundation foundations and conduit are installed. And we're waiting for the installation schedule from the signal contractor. Um, the sidewalk and handicap ramps are going to be installed shortly. I'm I know Jason's here. The flashing light on sunset? He is here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi. Flashing light on sunset going to be repaired? There's a flashing light that's been broken for like two years. Says you're going 25 miles an hour. Slow down. Is that part of the contract? The speed signs uh, on either side. There's one heading westbound, one heading eastbound. Uh, the signal contractor is going to look at those two and evaluate what's uh, wrong with them. Uh, we're anticipating it's probably a battery issue, so it may be as simple as simple a fix as swapping out the batteries. Is that something our electrician should be? It was not. It was not part of the road contract. Okay. Then we'll have Manny's off uh, today, possibly tomorrow, so we can have him look at it in coordination with Manny. Sure. The one on Third Avenue is not working either. Yeah, okay. that one. I Bill and I were talking about that one today. So yep. okay. He knows about it. Manny's going to go there tomorrow. Because they're all the same. So if it's a battery, they're all the same batteries. Totally. They were all put, well. They were all put up at the same time. I remember when they were put up. For Fourth Avenue, the sanitary sewer main installation is currently under the way. Underway. Um, the contractor has completed installation of the main from Memorial to Jeffrey Street, and it's about 60% done. Um, we've asked the contractor, Jason has asked the contractor to approve the daily conditions and cleanup, which they've been doing, um, and that they are behind schedule. And on Fourth Avenue, as you've seen pictures, there was some, well, lateral issues. There was lateral to nowhere. There was turns all over the place. Um, the contractor has been very good with saw cutting some of the I thought that was on Sunset. We found some on 4th, I believe, okay. right? Yeah, there's two on 4th as well. Sunset was the worst, but it's they're all or were interconnected at some point in time. It um, it, I'm sorry, because uh, Jason's here. It, it seems... Jason, why don't you just come up, say who you are, and sit up there? Yeah. It seemed like they were going real fast on 4th Avenue, then they got up towards Jeffrey and the Bend, and it seemed to stop for a week. Uh, Are yeah, they tied so in laterals? It's a little bit slow going. Uh, we haven't begun the process of tying in and replacing the laterals yet. Uh, what, we've, what we found is, as you know, uh, the water main on 4th Avenue was replaced by New Jersey America Water. There's a parallel uh, water main, the old water main, which is according to New Jersey American Water, abandoned. However, as we're going down um, and, and installing the main, the old service connections that cross the sewer main that are connected to the, uh, to the uh, water main that New Jersey American Water says is abandoned, we're finding are live. What does that mean? That means, that means the water main that, that is supposed to be empty is full of water and pressurized. Okay. Is that why a lot of people are complaining about breaks and there's no breaks? I'm sorry? There's about three or four houses on the 1200 block of 4th Avenue where water and it's just coming up. Have you noticed that? Coming up from? Well, there's puddles in the morning. In the roadway? On uh, the sidewalk. On the 
the side by the curb. In the curb line. By the, by the curb line. It's, it's it quite could possible be. Yeah. that the old water main that is supposed to be abandoned is still alive. Is, is still alive and leaking into the underground voids. That's so not we're, good. We're coordinating, yeah. we're coordinating with New Jersey American Water as best as possible. Um, they are tracing any potential source of that pressurized water. It could be coming from any of the side streets. Um, it's my understanding that when they abandon the water main, they simply shut off all the valves leading to it and just left it. So either they, they found a valve that they didn't shut all the way and it's still charging that main, but every time we come across a service, and we clip it, it's supposed to be dead, it's not dead, it fills the trench full of water, then we gotta stop. We gotta call New Jersey American Water, they gotta come out and tap it. We gotta pump out the trench and then we can start all over again and move forward. So that's partially the reason why you see a, a, a slowdown okay. in some spots. Who's our contact with New Jersey American Water? Bauer? Uh, Bauer, Bauer used to be the contact, it's now Jeremiah Holsart. Mr. Bauer, I believe, has, has been reassigned to somewhere in South Jersey. Okay. And you have a good relationship with him? Yeah. It seems like yeah. whenever we have a problem, like we get they're JC. Out, they're no, out no, there no. within the hour. Okay. And uh, they're usually local guys, so. Okay. I mean, I always see Mr. Markey from JCP&L. I always see uh, Tom Hayes from the gas company. I never see anybody from the water company. And it seems like we can never find them when we need them, so. They showed up when we met with Spring. When we met with, with, when we met with Spring, but they actually showed up. Okay. Yeah, they, 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 they okay. Thank you. Let's stay there. <laughs> that was really it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got what are, we, what are we going to next? Next would be matters by city council. But just because I got a couple of street matters for Go Jason. For Does anybody mind? Yeah, sure. And for more micro. But Asbury Avenue. County told us last year after Labor Day, and they're telling us this year after Labor Day. I'm a betting person. <laughs> I'm not betting on them. What do we hear? They said they were going to start site work at the end of September, or early October, with paving in November or December. So that's their and paving in December is a total waste of money. That's on the plan, the weather, but I prefer it not to be, but that's the only way they're going to get it done because remember last year they wanted to do it after. Kevin and I went to a meeting with them last year after Labor Day and they pushed us back to December and we said just forget it because they had to start because their their goal was to start site work in December and then pave first thing after Memorial Day. We had said that's right. you cannot have that road paved after Memorial Day. So now they're still, they came back saying we'll do the site work in September, October, into November and then Mill and Pave. So Jay's here, we'll you know, reach out to the county tomorrow and we'll see where they, okay. they are with it. But the last thing I heard a month ago was that that, that was supposed to come. Okay. And then Steiner Place. Were we making progress there as far as getting information from DOT that we're either going to like pay the money and create parking spots and put up at our dime the railroad, uh, what is it? The metal Guard. guardrail. Steiner Place is an internal thing with Manzella. Jay and Christine, or uh, I guess maybe Fran, or whatever the transportation board, like Soul Falls, to uh, come up with some sort of plan. Um, I talked to Manzella last week. He just hasn't had time to sit down and, and draw something up to give it to them for review. Um, when we were out there a couple times, it's going to look difficult. Um, New Jersey Transit has been great with us of you know, giving us any plans that we need. Um, we have agreements already in place like the draft ones, it's just, can it actually physically work? Okay. So hopefully by middle October when Manzella comes back, um, he can finish that. But that's where we are. Quite honestly, we didn't want to pay them to do it with Mike and draw it up. Thank you, that's all I have. Arlene? Good, I have nothing. Um, on Monday, September 18th, the planning board will have a 
will host a public meeting where we're going to introduce the master plan reexamination report. So everyone is invited that wants to participate in this in this process. If you wish to see the report, it is currently online on the website. So please come out on Monday evening, seven o'clock. Where? Right here. And what's the process, Monday? Well, the process is Clark Caton is going to present the report, and then the public can ask questions, give so input. They're going to flip page by page. No, it's a, no. They're not going to flip page by page. It's a report. It's a uh, presentation. So if you want to know every detail, you have to go in and look at the report online. But that's just the first meeting. There will be a second meeting. Okay. Thank you. Jesse, uh, just one minute, please. <laughs> It was brought to my attention over the last uh, five or six days about the school buses that's running in and out of Asbury. There's one particular bu uh, bus that goes to Belmar, the school system. I don't know if I can call out their name or all, but there's a lot of problems on this particular bu bus, and the residents have been contacting me at 6.30 in the morning about a lot of the music Music being played on the bus at a high rate, people dancing on the buses and playing and playing games. And they also, as they go down the street, which I witnessed a couple of times because I did walk over a, uh, a couple of areas, that they do throw stuff out of the windows while the bus driver is driving. I don't know if that's anything relevant we could take care of, Mike, or... We can reach out to the company. You can tell me their name after the meeting. Or the, or the school yes, system that exists. probably going to the charter school. It's going to Belmar, yeah. Okay, that's all I have. But uh, we need to try to address this because they do be throwing that's stuff out of the window and if someone's going to get hurt, there's no safety in it. All right, that's all I have. Thank you. Nothing. Nothing. One last thing I'd like to congratulate uh, Sylvia, Sylvia Chaffee and the Chamber of Commerce uh, and all the volunteers, the high school students, everybody that worked it. It was a great oyster fest. Uh, the weather cooperated, and it was a great time. Great new venue. Congratulations and thank you. That's all I have. Matters by the city manager? No, at this time. Matters by the city attorney? Okay, at this time, we'll break until 7 o'clock. Chapman? Here. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Please rise for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 3rd, 2017, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. At this time, can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public, please? Move it. A second. Each member of the public, when you please come up to the mic, please state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes to don't speak. Minute. Don't start the clock. Don't don't start. Okay. <coughs> please, sorry. Ex excuse me. Uh, and Bob, I'm sorry, just right. one second. Uh, Matt and Sylvia, you weren't here during the work session, but I just want to let you know that the entire council praised the great job Oyster Fest was, and fantastic, great venue, and you guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, thank You're you. <laughs> uh, about a year or so ago, this council removed street parking permits for anyone whose landlord, such as Carter Sackman, uh, provided parking, even if it was at $100 a month. We also raised the price of the Banks Avenue garage to $75 a month, all in an effort to get cars off the street. I'm not, I don't know how that's working out. We'll have to see. Uh, recently, I asked for a Carter Sackman czar to plot where and how Carter is going to fit his shortfall parking spots with all his new projects. 
And now I'm asking for a new committee, and it's going to be titled, What in the World is Carter Sackman Up To? <laughs> With one month's notice, Carter Sackman raised the rates in his lots 50% from $100 a month to $150 a month, and people already f started to flee the lot uh, into the Bangs Avenue garage, which I believe may now be full. I want to know, does this have anything to do with his Lake Avenue project? And again, what in the world is Carter Sackman up to do? Uh, by the way, there were 83 cars in the parking lot on a Thursday uh, about two weeks ago. And now speaking of the Bangs Avenue garage, uh, I want to know whether this is fact or fiction. I spoke with three members at the staff at the police substation, and I was, t and by the way, those are lovely people, they're very helpful, uh, you know, just compliments to them. I was told the following. I asked if, if you're, what happens if you're unhappy with your space. Uh, and they said, don't worry, all cards have to be turned in by the end of December to make sure that they're still legal. Then the people will have to re-sign up with proper documents after all the cards have been turned in. Well, I said, when will, where will everybody park in January? I'm told, on the street. But don't worry, the police won't ticket you. They've been instructed not to ticket you. So is this the first you're hearing about this? Am I always the bearer of good news? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're bearer of uh, some startling news. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's good. Uh, Michael, do you want to comment on this? That's quite honestly the first I'm hearing about that. Um, I'll talk to Deputy Chief Delto because that makes absolutely no sense. Well, I, right after I left there, I, I, I met with Michael Manzella, and he said, what? Um, yeah, so I think there's a miscommunication somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll find out what is actually happening. If you know the people's names, do just come to later. Well, they're the three people that work there. And very nice people. They... Together, they told me the story when I just seemed incredulous that this is what was going to happen. That, that you were putting everybody out to the street in January, and don't worry, you won't be ticketed. So I bring the news, and I, I'm sure you'll follow up. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you for the news. <laughs> All right. uh, Jordan Modell, 1001 Second Avenue, 305. Uh, Three things. Uh, one, the first one, I just wanted to wholeheartedly agree with the mayor and council that if you're going to be paving and taking care of a road, Memorial Drive probably wouldn't be the people's first choice. I monitor, I'm a lead on next door. I take a look at the complaints on all the different roads in Asbury, and Memorial is not first on the list. As a matter of fact, I've never really seen it mentioned. So just one, backing up what you said before, saying thank you for sticking up for maybe possibly not spending our money on Memorial Drive. That being said, um, so when I first came here almost uh, to the town council meetings about almost a year ago, um, I had come from a, an event called Porch Fest, which was a 10-year-old event all across the country, the last one being in Napa Valley. Um, and I thought this was a good idea, and I had mentioned it, and Amy said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So when Amy says something, I follow up. <laughs> um, and so I'm sort of proud to announce that um, Porch Fest, and I'll explain what it is. Essentially, it's just local musicians paying on people's private porches. Um, will be October 21st, um, between the hours of 12 and 5. Um, we will have a website that's launching next week called apporchfest.org. Um, we have 12 porches and 30 musicians volunteered so far. We're going for 15 porches and 50 musicians, and we're purposely trying to make this throughout Asbury Park, not in any one particular area. So probably the only zone that will be excluded is CBD because CBD doesn't really have a whole hell of a lot of porches to go to anyway. Um, and that's it. It sounds like a, it still sounds like a great idea. Good luck. Gary, Gary Maffei, 601 Madison. The Downtown Neighbors Association of Asbury Park proposes the city change its traffic ordinance to prohibit tractor trailers from using city streets in the CBD. I presented several photographs to Councilman Kendall to share um, of these track trucks interacting with our streets. Last month, a food company tractor trailer couldn't make the turn off Emory Street onto Bangs Avenue. Vehicle and pedestrian traffic had to be stopped and the truck had to be guided backwards. Last week, the same truck lowered its lift gates, blocking a crosswalk for 30 minutes on Cookman Avenue. That's picture number one. 
Yesterday, it used the street as its private delivery area, picture number two. Last week, a beer tracked the trailer, parked off a corner in two pieces, blocking the intersection, picture number three. There are numerous children who live in the building surrounding this particular corner. In fact, there are six schools, preschools, and daycares in and around the CBD. There are numerous deliveries made each week using these extra large vehicles in the CBD. Some of these vehicles are refrigerated and leave their motors idling, adding to the various forms of pollution. Nationally, one pedestrian or cyclist is killed each day by these large trucks. In 2014, New Jersey saw 28 people die in such accidents. In May, a tractor trailer overturned in Woodbridge, killing one person on the ground. Large freight trucks are incompatible with city streets in many ways, bringing danger, pollution, noise, damage, and traffic congestion. They park in bike lanes, yellow corners, crosswalks, and have shockingly large blind spots, putting everyone around them at risk. When parked, they take up three to four parking spots and don't pay the meter. Heavy trucks obviously cause more road damage than cars. According to a GAO study, road damage from one multi-wheeler is equivalent to 9,600 cars. Big trucks pounding the pavement are causing numerous problems, eroding the subsurface, creating large holes that have to be repaired while also damaging sewer and water lines. The average tractor trailer weighs 80,000 pounds compared to the 5,000 pounds of a car. The average car is 13 feet long compared to 75 feet for the tractor trailer. It's time to ban these behemoths from our streets before a serious incident occurs. I will send this request to the city manager tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Conrad, 1218 Sunset Avenue. Um, I have three things I'm following up on. Um, one is the island bump out. Um, I did speak with a uh, city manager and uh, he stated that the commission, the, the city is, is accountable for that area and that I, my neighbor told me that the environmental change, change people, commission. yeah, them people. They came out and started cleaning, and I, I'm assuming there's a plan that's going to be happening uh, thereafter. So I thank you guys for following up on that, and because it really will help in the long run, because that is a gateway area into Asbury Park. Um, the other one is um, the county area, the property on as the bridge is as you're coming into Asbury Park on each side. Um, in front of the fence and in back of the fence that it's it last when I, I presented here I wasn't sure if it's county property or city property and so I called the county and the county said that it is their property but that they're going to give it to y'all I, I was real not clear about the technology you know technical part about it, but they, they, they would give it to y'all and then y'all would be accountable for she's frowning y'all would be accountable <laughs> for cleaning it up so I suggested that they call the city manager. And um, I had been out of the country, and I got back like this week, and it's worse. It is weeds that has grown this high. It's horrible. It's like horrendous. Someone has got to take care of this. I don't know who it is. I don't know, Michael, if you received the call from uh, the county. But I would like to know what the update of that is. The last thing is the follow-up on the garbage that is in um, front of, uh, what's the name of that restaurant? Sunset Landing. Thank you, Sunset Landing. And um, I was not sure at the last meeting that I was here whether or not it is, this thing, whether it's cold, that it's all right, and I'm, I just need to get flat. Is it within your code that garbage can be in front of a business? Um, and a oil can, uh, yeah, oil, a oil can in front of the business as well. So I just want to get flat on, on that. Those are the three things. Michael, take number three. Um, three and two. I've never heard from the. I've never heard from the county. The county's never called me about anything. And I that. give them your number. 
Um, I just emailed our superintendent of public works to reach out to the county. What happens a lot of the times is we wind up doing it. So I told him to reach out to the county. If he doesn't get a response in a day or two, um, we'll just cut it. It, it. it happens all the time. Um, concerning Sunset Landing. So, so let me just finish. So they are accountable for it? Yes. Yes, okay. but they have like one bridge crew that does all the bridges in Monmouth County, unless you call them in like April to get them here in September, it's not gonna work. And I mean, it goes back to when I worked with DPW, you had to go through it. Same as they're supposed to maintain the Grand Avenue bridge. And you see all the weeds come in there and it's by the time DPW calls, it's quicker just to go weed eat it ourselves. So I mean, as much so as- So you can cut it, I really, you know. It, it is bad. Know. It's very no, no. embarrassing for the city. Yes, it is bad. Um, Concerning the, the restaurant, I was there numerous times. Um, we reviewed all the plans. I personally reviewed all the plans. Um, it's up to code. It was always up to code the, the times I was there. Yes, they are able to put out their garbage and the grease because that's how it gets picked up. And it's been that way forever. Um, no. It's, mm -mm. it's the way that they operate and there was no code violation that I could find. Is it aesthetically pleasing? Probably not, but it, it is how they have to operate their business. Well, it's not how it gets picked up. It's when, when they're garbage, when it's garbage day, they take their garbage behind the, that fence and then they put it on the, on the curb. Yes. So other than that, that being there is not ready to be thrown out. And you know, it's, it, it's, so there are other businesses in Asbury Park that garbage is in the front is my yes. question. Yes. And the other question, okay, I got it. Another question is the oil. That's a big concern. It could spill into the water. It could be a, a very bad accident if someone, as I shared before, someone could be smoking. So um, I, I don't know of any code on this planet that would make that safe. It, it is in a approved container. We've actually had other businesses in the city who left out their oil in non approved containers, and we've gone after them. That is a And you can put it in the front of a of a because that's how it gets picked up because they don't have the pride. Um, this has actually happened quite honestly with some of the Madison Market properties where they put their oil in the front in non approved containers. It happened a lot last year and they corrected. We told them we're gonna start summoning you, fix it. They did, they fixed it, there's been no issues with that then. They had they actually had some leaks last year. So yes, it's permitted, it has to be an approved container, it has to be sealed. It's doing it right. She's doing right for her, but thank you. Yeah, and as much as like we're all calling it oil, it's cooking grease, cooking oil, cooking grease, grease and and oil. it's it's, it's flammable. no, it's not flammable. Grease is not flammable. That you would have to put a blowtorch to and still wouldn't catch on fire. Cooking grease won't. Well, I live across the street. No, I, 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 I no, I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but I just wanted to let you know that it's not flammable. Well, it's, it, it can't be safe, uh, Mayor. That's, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't understand how that could be safe and how that could be allowed in this city because I don't really see people putting their garbage out in the front. But not, not so much the garbage, but the oil. I mean, just, it makes me feel out of Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Felicia Simmons, Asbury Park, Sewell Avenue. Um, I have two. First, about the parking, I mean the street paving, which is great. There's a street, if you need a street, I recommend um, Sewell Ave I mean Summerfield Avenue, especially down by the middle school. And I recommend repaving it and putting a bump in. It's a very dangerous street, especially at school time, because the reroute, when they shut the streets down, in that area, they come down Summerfield and they speed down the street and it's a very tight street and it goes both ways. There's been accidents where at the corner through speeding where they've crashed into the house at the end of the block on the um, corner of Ridge. So it's a very dangerous block. Just a bump just so they can slow down. Um, it's just a suggestion, you know, on that side. It's a terrible street, it's, it's terrible. Um, and second is I see the better block Asbury Park Springwood Avenue. 
and it's about the vendors and it's the pop-up block, right? That's what it's called, the pop-up block. Um, and I see different businesses, but there's a lot of businesses that would like to be in that area. I see the collaborations, which a lot of them are great collaborations, but a, a true input. I know someone who wants to have a, um, a cyber lounge that will be great in the transit village to come off the train and have a cyber lounge right there off of um, Springwood Avenue somewhere. Um, there's a lot of different things. How, if we're gonna just have this first one, is there gonna be a second one with different ideas and different people who wanna pop up? I don't know if there's gonna be a second one, but Felicia, the person who's working on this one, I would be happy to put you in touch with, one of the two people who are working on it. I think he's really open to you know, any ideas that you have. He's meeting with people all the time who's, who's working on it. Okay, that'll be so great. So I will happily send you an email if you don't mind. Well, I don't mind. Oh, no, no, no I'm, I'm <laughs> saying somebody's gotta send me an email to remind me to send this email. <laughs> but I'll, oh, I'll, oh, I will. I'll, 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 I'll put a to-do list. Okay, I got it, Felicia. I'll, I'll send an email to either tomorrow or Friday latest. All right, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Hi, Rita Moreno, 8th Avenue. Uh, I too would like to talk about the parking. The box truck still parks on the street. Um, that's number one. Number two, I don't think the parking uh, officers know the rules. I mean, we know them better than they do. And now they're measuring a vehicle to see how long it is. I mean, I, I thought it went by weight when you, there's a vehicle parked in front of your house that's a truck, they have to measure it? I never heard of such a thing. They, they really don't know the ordinance about parking, like if a car's on a street for three days and you make a phone call about it, they don't come and they don't look at it. It's not supposed to be there. It's in the ordinance book. I, I'm hoping the city manager reviewed the ordinances about parking. The other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the beach revenue. Could we get a beach report or do you have one tonight? That's my second question. Third question I wanted to know about uh, where they had the dumpster. On. I just came down Main Street and where they had that dumpster on, I think that's what, 4th Avenue? Where the pizza place is. Medusa. They left all the poles up now. Is that a decoration? on the corner, it's got like four, uh, it's got barrels and then it's got sticks or pieces of wood in it. I didn't know if that was a decoration. They were painted huh? green now. And uh, right. that's about She's it. Right. So do we get a beach report? Beach report isn't finalized yet. We're very close to last year's number, which was a little bit over $2 million. Okay. By the way, why do we have all those vehicles on the beach? You feel like you're sitting on Route 35 instead of a beach. I mean, they're riding back and forth. It's not that much Well, beach. there's a lot of safety with the riptide, so they're doing their job. And the fire department the other day did an excellent save. Kevin, thank you, and thank your men. Uh, it's still nice weather outside, so everybody don't think because it's warm and the water looks nice you should not go swimming without a lifeguard and the reason they have all those vehicles up and down is to, to patrol and to relieve people so they can go take breaks like any other beach up and down the jersey shore i've been sitting on that beach for 50 years i mean like well, back in then they had horse I and buggies lifeguards. <laughs> i mean it's not a big walk i mean i could see one or two but they ride back and forth like they have nothing better to do when they're flying, they're probably going for an emergency. <laughs> I would hope. Huh? I don't know. I, you know, Asbury is pretty safe. It's been safe. They have good lifeguards. Yeah, but, but Rita, the riptides, ever since the Corps of Army Engineers are notching the jetties, the riptides have been terrible. And uh, that's why we have signage up, and uh, there's been drownings up and down the shore this year. Luckily, there was none in Asbury Park. Uh, no town wants to go through that. I mean, what Belmar went through and other towns went through, it's a crying shame, and those vehicles are needed. Okay, and when you get, uh, will that be at the next meeting, the beach report? It should be. Yeah, all right. Could you have a parking report, too? 
I'm very curious about that. Parking report, right now I'd say we're <clears throat> less than 5% ahead of last year. Okay, but I mean like really, you should call a meeting of the police officers because they could do a better job on that. They do, I mean like, they just don't know the rules. I'm sure and Michael we've lived would here be so talking. long that we know all the rules. I'm sure Michael will be talking to Deputy Chief Kelso tomorrow morning about this issue. And I'm getting tired of hearing about the box truck. I'm getting tired of hearing, and I agree with her about the barrels on 4th and Main. What they were, they were like part of the fence. And then when the fence came down, they just left the barrels there. And they are in the city right away. It's just like, well, you made me take down my fence, but I'm gonna leave my barrel. So it's just like a tit for tat. And it's just, it doesn't look attractive. And it's doing nobody any good. If, if it was doing them a pur purpose, I would say fine, but there is no purpose. Thank you. Hi, Sylvia, Sylvia, Chamber of Commerce. Um, first, on uh, behalf of Matt and myself, I'd like to uh, thank all of you for your kind words about Oyster Fest. Um, I actually came here to tell you guys how wonderful everybody in the city had been helping us through um, the production of Oyster Fest, and I tried not to say this too much beforehand as I never ran a festival before <laughs> and um, the amount of guidance I got from the police department and helping making sure I was compliant with the um, the uh, social affairs permit um, Leisha and Cassandra in your office um, the fire department Kevin Keddy could not have been more gracious with his um, uh, imparting his experience uh, to me about what I needed to get done um, Councilwoman Chapman, just the million things that you helped me with, and right down to meeting Matt and me at the venue at the crack of dawn to help us find the best places to put our vendors, um, the DPW, um, the EMT, the uh, fire and police at the event. Um, I just can't say enough about how wonderful everybody was, and then the dunk tank. Oh, Lord, that you guys <laughs> did that for me. Um, and if um, there are people who don't know what we did, we raised funds towards our scholarship um, with a dunk a politician dunk tank. And our mayor and uh, Councilwoman Chapman were gracious enough to come and sit in the dunk tank. And I don't have final numbers, but we raised hundreds of dollars towards that scholarship that will go to seniors in our high school here. Um, Deputy Mayor offered to go in, and I appreciate that so much. And all well, of you that threw. I appreciate you not putting me in even more. <laughs> I, <laughs> you, you were uh, this close. I was just yeah. about to call when uh, um, Eileen said that she would go in. Um, so I just, I really wanted to thank you all. And Mike Manzella, I know he's not here, but everybody wanted to dunk the parking guy. <laughs> everybody. Uh, he um, he sh has a whole scholarship of his own. So <laughs> thank you all so much. Really appreciate everything. Congratulations again. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scrano, Long Branch. Um, I like to bring up the issue about speed bump. We need something on Grand Avenue between Deer Lake Drive and 8th Avenue. When people make the turn off Deer Lake Drive to go up 8th Avenue, they seem to gas the cars. You need to do something about that because I heard there were accidents there. Maybe a police car would look good. The citizen patrol car could be parked on the corner. Maybe people see the yeah, where police are you car. Yeah, what's the same, Jerry? Turn off the, from Deer Lake Drive. Again? They Deer speed Lake up right by 500 Deer Lake Drive. Oh. They, um, now, is there any way to turn the beach utility into an authority? Because when I was in that Long Branch last night, when I asked about stretching the money for tourism, like oh. lining the streets and stuff, I was informed it's not a utility, it's an authority, and that money goes back into the city. And they thought the idea of help starting small businesses for tourism and stuff like that for local residents was a good idea. But um, I like you to look and see how Long Branch does it. Maybe we can modify it. Then um, a little friendly um, competition. If you go to Pier Village, they're building pier um, 
section three of Pure Village and have a beautiful model of what's gonna be built there with the carousels, the little glass building, the little cars, the little people on the beach and stuff. They have mock-up bathrooms and kitchens for their sales office in Pure Village. There's no reason why our developers can't put models somewhere so people can see them. And I find it interesting, Long Branch has five brand new construction sites going up at one time, and we're struggling with just one. You gotta do something to make them do something. Um, now, we need to ask the Chambers of Commerce of a few towns to work together, maybe Long Branch, Bradley Beach, Belmore, Monmouth Racetrack, and we should be advertising worldwide that we're the place to go to. We're only an hour out of New York City, and if they could combine the budget, maybe tourism could bring a lot more people to the city. I know you had record numbers, and real estate values are becoming record numbers now. The, with, what I'm going to say also is there's no more to ha reason to have pilot programs and tax abatements for the developments for residential buildings. Maybe for stores or, or other businesses you may want to do it, but I think you need to put a break on that. And what's good about doing this worldwide advertising, maybe people will start using the train from New York to come here. It's a good idea. And then how are we doing with the department head reports? Are they going to be on the computer websites? Or the summer's gone now. Michael? Um, as we said last meeting, the performance reports have been up on the website since April. Oh, they are? Yes. And they're showing how we're saving money or anything like that? It, it's performance metrics from every department about calls for service, um, website hits, everything that is measurable from each department, how many marriage licenses. Okay, thank you, Michael. Thank you, guys. Thank but you I just thought that friendly competition and cooperating with other towns, we all benefit because Asbury Park and Long Branch want to be economic engines because we have the best stores, but you could even include Red Bank, but if you get all the short towns doing joint advertising, there's no reason why Europeans can't come here like the French Riviera. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm a motion opposed. Second. We're on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes this evening. Executive session minutes of August 9, 2017. Workshop minutes of August 9, 2017. And regular session minutes of August 9, 2017. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. On to adoption of the 2017 municipal budget. First is resolution 2017-264, which is a resolution to amend the 2017 calendar year budget. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Sure. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. <laughs> Resolution 2017-265, adoption of the 2017 municipal budget. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? <coughs> Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to consent agendas. There are several, so please bear with me. Resolution 2017-266, which is a resolution to credit sewer account for 1222 Monroe Avenue. 2017-267, resolution authorizing refund due to overpayment for 829 Dunlouis Louis Street. No, I think that was 2017-268, authorizing compensation payment to Greg Catchmore for his separation of employment. 2017-269, authorizing compensation payment for Pierre Louise upon his separation of employment. 2017-270, 
authorized submission of grant application to State New Jersey Department of Public Safety Division of Highway Traffic under the 2017 Junk Driving Enforcement Grant Fund. 2017-271 authorized submission of grant application to the United States Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs Bureau of Justice Assistance Grant funding under the 2017 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Grant Assistance, which is the JAG program. 2017-272 resolution approving contract with YMCA for senior citizen swimming programs. Resolution 2002 2017-273, this is a resolution authorizing compensation payment to Hannah Walker upon her separation. 2017-274 is RCA uh, agreement project for 12, uh, 1025 to 1027 Monroe Avenue. 2017-275 is an RCA agreement for 1021 Sewell Avenue. 2017-276 is an RCA agreement for 158 Ridge Avenue. 2017-277, which is an RCA agreement for 1135 Sewell Avenue. And then finally is resolution 2017-286, approving special event applications. Does anybody wish for any of those resolutions to be pulled from the consent agenda? Hey, hearing none, can I have a motion to approve? Moved it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor <laughs> Quinn? Yep. Mayor Moore? Yes. Yep. On to individual resolutions. First is resolution 2017-278, resolution authorizing the payment of bills. I believe it was uh, offered that purchase order 17-01847 is going to be pulled from this evening's agenda for payment. And then Councilmember Chapman abstains from the following purchase orders. 17-01527, 17 17-02-707, 17-00997, 17-02847, 17-02463, and 17-00222. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. And any comments or uh, questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Next is going to be resolution 2017 279. Resolution authorizing the purchase of three license plate readers from ELSAG for the police department. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-281, resolution approving change order number two for the City Hall Generator Project. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-282, resolution approving change order number one for emergency service radio coverage testing. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-283, resolution the mayor and council of the city of Asbury Park acting as a redevelopment entity regarding the application of Madison Asbury Retail LLC for conceptual review of the 4th Avenue Pavilion renovation on block 4502, lot 1.03. During work session, there was an amendment discussed with this work session. So can I have a motion to include that amendment with this resolution, please? It's 03? It's 1.13. And did I say? 1.03. Oh, I'm so, I read it wrong, sorry. Can I have a motion, please? Motion to move the amended resolution. Have a second? Second. Any further comments or questions? Mm -hmm. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. 
Resolution 2017-284, resolution authorizing approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant contract with New Jersey Department of Transportation for year 2018. I believe you wish to table this to the next meeting, so can I have a motion to table, please? Motion to table. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yep. Mayor Moore? Yes. We will table this to the September 27th meeting. Resolution 2017-285, entering a right-of-way agreement. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-287, requesting waiver from the NJDOT inspection fees. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Well, on to ordinances. We have two ordinances this evening for introduction. The first is 2017-37, amending and supplementing Chapter 2, Administration Section 2-4.3, Membership Wesley Lake Commission of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for October 11, 2017. Second ordinance is 2017-38, adopting amendment to the scattered site plan redevelopment plan. Kind of a motion to introduce, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance will be held on October 11, 2017. We have one ordinance for public hearing tonight, 2017-36, a capital ordinance appropriating the sum of $42,400 for acquisition of a speed trailer for the police department, various tools and equipment for the mechanics within the Department of Public Works, various tools and equipment for the fire department. Can I have a motion to open this ordinance up to the public, please? Move it. Second. Seeing no public close. question, can I have a move, move, move to, to close? close? Second. Second. Oh, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Quick question, Felicia Simmons, Asbury Park School Avenue. Um, the different equipment, different mechanics. Um, what are you doing with the old equipment um, first? And second, what kind of equipment? There is no old equipment, it's buying new equipment. Um, it's a speed trailer, so as I described at the last meeting, the speed trailer is going to be deployed on Fort and Sunset. <coughs> And, oh, if the speed trailer moved down, I'm going to bring it up again. Summerfield Avenue, okay. especially by the school. <laughs> okay. Motion to close. Move it. Second. Can I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2017-36? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Motion to adjourn? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye.